Flooding, part of the NXL GCSE 9 to 1 Geography course. So what we're going to be learning about in this video are the causes of flooding, the impacts of flooding, flood hydrographs, flood defences, which are split into two categories, hard engineering, which are dams and reservoirs, channelisation, and then soft engineering, which are floodplain zoning and washlands. Obviously, there's many more types of flood defences, but these are the only four that you need to learn about for the course. So the causes of flooding. Precipitation, which is heavy rainfall over a long period of time, which results in saturated soil and surface runoff. There's flash flooding. Hot dry areas where the land is baked hard causes flooding as there is an intense burst of heavy rainfall. Water cannot infiltrate and results in rapid discharge. This is where the land is too hard, okay, and the water can't get through it, okay, and so what happens is the water stays above the soil, okay, and the, above the land, which causes flooding. Snow melt. When temperatures rise and snow melts, the stored precipitation is released as surface runoff. This is where the, uh, the heat rises, temperature gets too hot for the snow, for the ice, and it melts and it causes basically uh, the water to flow down a surface runoff. Deforestation, where trees are cut down and this reduces the interception and transpiration by the trees. This results in increased runoff. Then urbanisation. When land is urbanised, vegetation is removed, so deforestation occurs, and the land is covered in concrete and tarmac, which means that the water cannot infiltrate through this, which results in rapid discharge also. So the impacts of flooding. Buildings and properties can be damaged. Crops and farmlands can be ruined, possibly for months. So that can affect people's livelihoods. People and animals can drown. Contamination can occur in drinking water supplies and waterborne diseases can be caught. So for example, cholera can occur when there's loads of flooding happening and transport can be interrupted, which can also affect people's livelihoods. So hard engineering. Hard engineering is the attempt at controlling natural processes using man-made structures. So the first type that you need to know for the course are dams and reservoirs. So dams are structures that are designed to restrict and hold back the flow of water. Reservoirs are what happens occur and occurs behind the dam and it's a man-made body of water. Okay, so the advantages. Energy can be created through hydroelectric power through the dam. Recreation activities can occur in the dam and of course it's very good at preventing the water from flowing through. They can really restrict how much water goes through. However, the disadvantages are that it's very expensive. Sediment is often trapped behind the dam, which leads to more erosion downstream. So if the sediment's trapped there, it's going to move down and there's going to be no sediment for it to, uh, well, no new sediment for it to uh, replenish the stores which are being eroded. So it's going to erode more, more quickly. The land can be lost where the reservoir is flooded. So often they'll flood a town or they'll flood a farm, uh, lots of, of farmland. OK, and obviously the dam is visually intrusive, as you can see in the picture here. This originally could have been a really beautiful valley with loads of uh, trees and natural habitats. But now uh, the dam has been put there and that has been ruined as it is quite visually intrusive. Channelisation. The river channel can be widened or deepened, allowing it to carry more water. A river channel may be straightened so that water can travel faster along the course. This may be done to divert the river away from settlements. So you can see here, the river is a lot straighter and it's going to be a lot wider and deeper than it here, which is a tributary which is running on but it's part of the river okay and that's very curvy it's not very straight it's a lot thinner and it's not going to be as deep so the advantages of this are that it protects a media area as the water moves quickly away so say if there was a settlement here that's going to be protected as the water is quickly going to move past and it's not going to flood okay and it's long lasting this is going to last a long time often they'll put uh, concrete in which is a lot harder than the uh, rocks or whatever it's made out of the river. OK, and so that's going to last a lot longer. Disadvantages are that flooding can occur downstream where channelisation hasn't occurred. 
and the river flows quickly. OK, so say if the water is moving very quickly down here, then here it goes back curvy. The water is going to quickly come back into this curvy bit. It's going to be moving at the same velocity. OK, but it's going to flood easily because there's more water coming into a smaller uh, space for it to be in. It's visually intrusive. So as you can see, that is obviously being uh, changed by man. So that is different to the natural beauty of the original lake or uh, the original river. And it's very expensive as well. It's going to cost a lot of money to change this. There's going to be lots of drilling, lots of labour going into it. Soft engineering. The attempt at controlling natural processes using natural structures. OK, so floodplain zoning. Local authorities and the national government introduced policies to control urban development close to or on the floodplain to protect and prevent damage to settlement. The advantage of this is that it's very cheap. It's practically free. Sustainable as nothing is permanent. The laws can always be changed. And surface runoff is less likely to cause flooding as floodplain is, uh, is unbuilt upon. So as uh, the surface runoff usually occurs on impermeable rocks a lot more. So if there's no tarmac, so the housing up here and the industry and the roads and car parks, they're much higher than the pasture and the plain fields. OK, and so surface runoff is not going to happen along here. Disadvantages may be that there's resistance due to new control laws. So say if you want to develop on this land here, you're not going to be able to. So companies may be resistant to it. And enforcing the low uh, the laws can be very difficult, especially in low income communities and even countries. So, so if it's a poorer country, it's going to be really difficult to uh, enforce the law. Washlands. The river is allowed to, uh, to flood naturally in wasteland areas to prevent flooding in areas of higher land value, like settlements. So the advantages of that is very cost efficient, can provide wetland sites for plant, uh, birds and plants, so they're uh, much decreasing in the modern world as lots of areas being built on. So it's providing new area for that to happen and it can enrich the soil for agriculture. So it can mean that more and a uh, larger diverse amount of plants can be uh, grown there. Disadvantages are that those large areas of land that are taken over cannot be built upon. So as you see in this photo, if you wanted to build a uh, settlement here, you're not going to be able to as there's marshland and it's flooded. Hydrographs. Hydrographs show two graphs on one. So there's the rainfall in millimetres, which is shown as a bar chart. And then it's a discharge in cumex, which is usually shown as a line graph here. So on the graph, you look at how the river is affected by the storm or by rainfall. So the different parts to it, you've obviously got the axis, you've got the two types of graphs, and there's many things that you need to, that you can need to know about the uh, hydrograph. So you're never going to be asked to uh, draw a hydrograph in your exam, but you may be asked to annotate it or asked to um, show what you can see on the hydrograph. So the peak rainfall is here. That's the highest point of the bar graph. And the peak discharge is the highest point of the uh, line graph. OK, and the distance between that is the lag time. Ooh. So that's the lag time. You've also got the rising limb, which is on the line graph. And it's when it rises up to the peak, peak discharge. And you've got the falling limb as well, which is falling away from the peak discharge. It's a bit after that. So say if you were to get a question on an exam uh, in your exam on hydrographs, what would you mention? OK, so say if I asked you, to explain what the hydrograph is showing here. You'd quantify the discharge at the beginning. OK, so you'd say it is 10 millimetres of rainfall at the beginning. OK, say at what time the rainfall uh, begins and peaks. You say that the rainfall begins here, then it peaks here and make sure you give the time. What happens to the discharge as a result of the rainfall? Obviously, it's going to rise, there's going to be more discharge. So you're going to talk about the rising limb, talk about how fast it happens, talk about how much the, um, how much discharge there is extra. OK, at what time 
does the peak discharge uh, does the discharge peak and then what is the amount so the peak discharge is here so tell say what time it is okay and say how much discharge there is so there's about 35 here okay what is the lag time so you need to quantify how much lag time there is okay so it might be an hour two hours okay when does the discharge start to fall okay so how fast does it fall where does it end up okay at what time does the discharge return to its original level so this graph doesn't show that but you could maybe estimate it's going to curve off here and say it might uh, return back here and then you need to quantify that to say what time it returns and explain why this is happening explain why there's so much rainfall explain why this is going up why it's going down here why the peak discharge is here okay it's important that you make sure that you explain why it's happening that's what's going to get you the level eights and level nines okay that's what's going to push you into the top band for your answers